When they're not roaming about, of course, the Romans are going to have some form of furniture as well. And as with every other society, the Egyptians, the Greeks, etc., there's a difference between the upper classes and the lower classes. But let's start by introducing some of the basic elements and issues that we have to face when dealing with Roman furniture. First of all, much of it is similar to the Greeks. They're borrowing from the Greeks. Why? bunch of different reasons. Basically, the Greeks had colonized southern Italy while the Romans are developing. In fact, Rome being founded in about 750 BCE is almost as old as the Greeks, but they're going to be heavily influenced by the Greeks during those early years. They're also influenced by the Etruscans, which are heavily influenced by the Greeks. You see where this is going. So, by the time they take over Greece in 146 BCE, well, they've pretty much borrowed most of Greek culture, and consequently the furniture, such as the stools that you see here, are going to be very similar to what we see from the Greeks. In terms of materials, that's going to be very different. Now, whereas the Greeks would use metals, uh, you would see the use of stone and other materials, and in Egypt, they see wood as something that's very expensive. In Rome, it's actually the opposite. The Romans will use wood on a regular basis. And they're doing that because it's easily available. They have trade networks into northern Europe that can bring wood from, for example, the Black Forest of Germany down into Italy. Also, in the Roman period, there are still forests in Italy. They will use most of them. Consequently, we run into some issues by the time we get to the Renaissance. But Wood is going to be very, very common. They will use some stone, some ivory, but usually as overlays, veneers, or other decorative elements. Speaking of which, the Romans use veneers a lot. Veneer is basically a thin decorative covering of fine wood applied to a cheaper material. Look at your desk. If your desk looks like it's wood, it is probably veneered. Today we use plastics and papers that are printed to do that, but for the Romans and most of human history, we use actual wood veneers. And if you haven't handled veneer, it's very, very thin, easily pliable, and they simply apply it over the surface. So I could build a table out of, say, pine, something very cheap and, and easy to get, and then I could cover it with something very expensive, like ebony, which has to come from the Sudan, or other tropical woods from Africa, or whatever else. By the way, this isn't that unfamiliar, because of course they were doing that in their massive construction as well. In their architecture, they were covering their brick walls and concrete walls with stone veneers, usually marble. We'll also see the use of inlay and overlay. Now, as we've, as we've already covered, inlay means that you've cut out an area and laid the material into a mother material. So here, this is inlay. These are both level. This is not a leaf that has been applied over this brown or reddish brown material. So this is inlay, very, very common. They also use overlay, which simply means that I'm applying a decorative material over whatever I'm working with. And you can see that here on this detail from a Roman bed. Overlay is really, really common, and the Romans are using overlay and inlay as well as veneer because they like the idea of creating something fairly inexpensive, but then to keep up with the Joneses, you would put materials on it in very thin amounts that would make it look really expensive. By the way, something we do all the time to this day. They also love faux finishes, as you will see in Pompeii and elsewhere. And faux finishes are simply decorative paint finishes that replicate the appearance of materials, such as marble. By the way, very difficult technique, but very doable, the idea of marbleizing, uh, wood graining, or other stone materials. Now, they do this not only in their homes, but they're going to do this to their furniture. And obviously, if I paint on a faux finish, it may not look 100% realistic, but if you're six feet away, well, it works. But it is more inexpensive than using veneers, overlays, and inlays, because it takes less skill and it takes cheaper materials. So we will see the use of faux finish on a regular basis. 
Now the focus is also different, and here I'm comparing the Romans to the Egyptians. I'm leaving out the Greeks because the Greeks we don't know a lot about in terms of furniture, as we've covered. But with the Romans we do know a lot about their furniture, thanks to Pompeii and other sites. So in Egypt a lot of this furniture was left for the dead, and the focus was frequently on things used for the afterlife, used for the dead, whereas the Romans will focus on the living. The dead get stone sarcophagi, but it's a big stone box, it's a big coffin. They aren't being buried with lots of furniture and other things. The Romans are a little more practical than that. They're taking after the Etruscans who do the same thing. They don't bury the dead with objects for the afterlife. Sure, there are small offerings like a couple of coins or something like that, but nothing as ornate as the Egyptians. Instead, they focus on opulence or as much opulence as possible for the living. I should also point out, we see a lot of status through furniture, especially when we get into Rome, and the reason is we have uh, middle class, basically the knight class or the equestrian class, the senatorial class, that's all the same thing, sort of this Roman middle class, people that own the businesses, who are trying to keep up with the Joneses, and so we see a lot of these faux finishes and use of veneers in these homes so that you can show off your wealth without, well, walking someone into a big vault full of money and saying, look, that's mine. Obviously, even today, that's not something we want to do. So they will focus far more on opulent living for, well, the living, as opposed to the Egyptians who will use that furniture for the dead.